All right, let's have a look and see how we can customize the toolbar inside of Photoshop CC 2015.1. So up till now, uh, as you know, the toolbar, you can click on this little arrow and we can get two columns or we can get a single column. You can click and hold and see some of the tools underneath. And up till now, this has been the extent of customization of the toolbar. But now Adobe's allowed us to fully customize it with this new interface. And you can see the interface is kind of flat and kind of cool looking, very modern. So what you're going to do is you're going to go down here until you see these ellipses. And then you're just going to click and hold. And then you're going to see an option that says Edit Toolbar. Now we get the Customize Toolbar dialog box opens up. So let's have a look at some of the things that we can do with this. Say, for example, we're going to set up a workflow that we're going to be doing retouching. So what we want to do is get rid of all the tools here that don't have anything to do with retouching. So we can start from the top and just have a look. Okay, the artboard tool, we're not going to be using that. So we can actually just click and drag that into the extra tools. And if you notice that disclosure triangle on the bottom there is now gone because that tool is not in the toolbar anymore. It's still available, but it's not in there. But let's go down. So there's a couple of tools here. We don't really want the single row. Now, one of the things I do use the rectangular and the elliptical a lot, and particularly in retouching, I actually use the elliptical more. So I'm actually going to pull this up and I can have that one now showing at the front. So then when we click and hold, then this is going to show as an extra. Or the other thing we can do is actually just pull these to separate them. Notice we now see them individual. And now you can have these individually displaying on the toolbar for the tools that you really want to use. So lasso tool, polygon lasso tool, yeah, I don't really use the regular, uh, that rectangular, uh, magnetic much, sorry. So we're just going to kind of put them like that. So there we go, we've got those. Magic wand, let's not worry about that. Let's stick with the quick selection, it's much better. So, you know, we could go down here and we could pull these tools out. So notice what we're doing as I'm pulling them over here, they're not showing in there anymore. And so we've got all of this. What if we want to just get rid of everything here except for the eyedropper? So we pull the eyedropper up. Then we go down and instead of grabbing the individual tool, grab this little area here and we can click and drag and remove all of those tools out of there. So we can just go down and see that. Like we might not want the pencil tool much. We might not use the mixer brush, but we might keep these for retouching. Clone stamp, definitely pattern clone stamp, definitely not. Uh, we're not going to be using any of the, uh, we'll keep the history brush there. But once again, we don't want the art history brush, not for real retouching. And all the eraser stuff, uh, we just keep the eraser tool just for fun, get rid of the others, drag them out. And we're going to get rid of the 3D there. Paint bucket, I don't need that because I can do that with the Alt or the Option backspace. Now we can keep these tools in there, maybe pull the smudge tool out because I like to use that a little bit. Don't really ever use the sharpen tool, but barely use the blur tool, but they're there. Okay, so dodge, burn, and sponge. Let's separate these so they're showing on their own because we want to have those displayed. Now we've got all the pen tool stuff, we'll keep that there. We don't need type stuff for retouching. And, um, you know, these custom shapes. Probably not so much. If we want to grab those later, we can. Um, the hand tool, I don't really need that because I can just hit the space bar and do the same thing. Same with the rotate. I just hit the R key and use it. The zoom tool is very useful. All right, so as you can see now, we've got all these different tools here that we've changed things around. But what about things like the zoom tool, which I might use more than maybe some of these others? Well, what we can do is click and drag and change their position in here. So if I click and drag these up and I drop this one, say, right next to the move tool, now we can change the position of these tools and get our more useful tools in a position where you might actually want to use them. So as you can see there, that's how we can customize this. All right. So once we've customized this, we can also change these little things at the bottom. You can show and hide different things like that for the quick mask. But I like to have the quick mask on because I want to double click it in order to change the color of my quick mask. So I'll use that quite a bit. This I can turn off because that's just cycling through the views and you can just hit the F key. So if you use a lot of these keyboard shortcuts, you don't necessarily need to access these tools. And to be honest, most of the tools I use the most, I use a keyboard shortcut. So here's one of the things. You've got these hidden tools here. If you're not using the tools, you can disable the keyboard shortcuts. Now what's the great thing about that? Say like, for example, the R 
tool, you know, if you want to rotate. Or if you don't want to rotate um, and you do want to be able to do this, what you could do is turn that off. Now you can access all of these from the keyboard shortcut. However, if you disable the key, these tools from the keyboard shortcut, you can use those keyboard shortcuts for other tasks. So that's entirely up to you how you might want to do that. I'm going to enable it so I have access to them, just so they're not necessarily showing, but if I want them, I can grab them later. And I'm going to choose to save the preset, and we'll call it retouching. And just click done. And now we've set these tools like that. Now the tools that you don't see, if you click and hold, you can always access them from here. So if you really want the paint bucket tool, you can grab it right there. So um, obviously you'd have to be on a image like that, select it before you could use it. All right, so that's one part of this. Well, let's talk about the other part that we can do with this and that's that we can tie it into custom workspaces. So see right now we've got a different workspace. Right now I'm in the Colin Minimum workspace, which is just very minimal tools. But let's grab a couple of things I might use for retouching. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the brush tool and drag that out and have it on its own so I can have access to it because I like to have brushes when I'm retouching. Maybe we'll grab some actions as well. So let's grab some actions here. We're gonna open that up and make sure that our actions just pop under there under properties. There we go, and history. And I probably don't need the libraries for the task of retouching. So this is just a particular task and we can always go back. So I kind of like that. I'm gonna collapse the brush tool and set this up exactly how I want it. So I can just select that when I need it or now what we're going to do is we're going to save this workspace but first I want to bring the layers and all that stuff to the top I like the layers panel up there and then we can have the properties and maybe pop it open just a little bit more there we go so that's nicely set up so what we're going to do is um, let me select that move tool there and we're just going to go down and we're just going to create a new workspace and I'm going to call this retouch now this would be just like a regular one, except now we have the option to hit toolbar. If I turn on the toolbar, this customized toolbar now will be memorized with this particular workspace. So we can do that. We can also do the menus, which would be the menus up here. We can customize those, turn things on and off and keyboard shortcuts. I always turn on keyboard shortcuts, particularly if you're going to go here and you're going to hide some of these tools, turn them off and use those single keys for other things that you might want to do like feather and things like that. And then just hit save and now we're done. So let's have a look at some of the other ones and then we'll come back. So we've got some, you know, like motion has been put in here. So if you notice that we turn these uh, presets on, we've got painting and photography. These are presets that actually came uh, with Photoshop. So let's do the painting. We'll reset the painting. And you can see there's all the painting tools and also the menu bar now is showing the tools that you would use for this particular task. So we can go back to our one that we selected here, which is retouch. And notice that we get the layout that we wanted. We get the panels we want and we get the tools we want. So this really saves a lot of time. So let's just have a quick look at one more thing when we're in here. If we go in there and we want to edit the toolbar and you ever want to reset everything, you could either drag these individual items back in here and reposition them on our toolbar here, or you can just choose restore defaults, boom. And that will put everything in there or you can choose clear tools and that will take everything out. And then you can create a super minimal uh, workspace there like maybe just throw a brush tool in there and uh, there we go so a lot of our digital painters that's pretty much all they need as far as tools so I'm just gonna hit um, restore defaults and you can click done and uh, there we go that's how we work with our custom workspaces and our custom toolbars inside of Photoshop CC